Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. Uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I believe, like you have rightly heard from the senior special assistant on media, we have just uh, come out of the National Police Council meeting chaired by Mr. President and the Statistics Governors and the Minister of FCT in attendance, uh, who are members, also members of the Council. And uh, the purpose of that meeting was, uh, one, to get the appointment of the acting IG confirmed by the Council, that is in keeping with uh, Section 215 of the Constitution, uh, which requires the uh, affirmation or the confirmation of the full members of the Council before he is finally confirmed as substantive uh, Inspector General of Police. And secondly, to brief the Police Council on the security situation in the country. And uh, as usual, the meeting started with the uh, presentation of the, Inspe the Acting Inspector General of Police for confirmation, which fortunately the Council, because of the track records of service of the the Inspector General of Police, uh, Som Babal Ali, was uh, unanimously confirmed as the Inspector General of Police for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And uh, Mr. President used that opportunity to congratulate him for this appointment and to call on him to ensure that uh, uh, the confidence that Nigerians have reposed in him uh, is not left to waste, that he should work, to the challenge, work up to the challenge and ensure that uh, <coughs> the security challenges that this country is uh, facing are brought to the barest minimum. And uh, the Inspector General of Police assured Mr. President and Nigerians that he's going to work assiduously to ensure that uh, the responsibilities assigned to him are brought to bear and are uh, executed to the best of his ability and satisfactorily to the satisfactions of all Nigerians. Uh, thereafter, the meeting was briefed by the Inspector General of Police on the state of security in the country. It's a very lengthy brief. And I believe he should be able to give us a very brief summary of uh, what he informed the uh, Council on the state of security in Nigeria. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we know the situation is uh, getting under control. But uh, let me invite the Inspector General of Police so that you hear it from the horse's mouth. Thank you very much. You see, uh, there is no, uh, if, if you want to have a safe society, you, it has to be expensive. And this administration is quite aware of this, and it's determined to ensure that uh, whatever is needed to secure this country is also provided. At the last Security Council meeting that we had, Mr. President has... Let me congratulate myself first. <laughs> for being confirmed at the Inspector General of Police for the Republic of Nigeria. Uh, secondly, like the other minister said, I had briefed the Council on the State of Security in the nation, and uh, I started by saying what is actually a threat to national security as it is now, ranging 
from or coming from all the six geopolitical zones. Uh, there are peculiarities. Like I said, what we have in the southeast and the part of the south south is the issue of successionist agenda championed by IPOP. I also talk about the issue of terrorism and the religious bigotry in the North East particularly. I also talked about the issue of kidnapping, armed robbery, banditry, cultism, and other biases as it affects the North Central, North West, and the South West. I gave a synopsis in terms of what we are doing to address this situation and the assets available to us. I also thank Mr. President and the government for providing additional logistics in terms of carrying out our duties and responsibilities. I concluded by saying there is room for improvement from what we are doing, and uh, we, in collaboration with other security agents and the military, will try to checkmate all acts of lawlessness, criminality, and uh, lawful agitations in order to ensure life and properties are saved, and at the same time, Nigerian citizens go about their lawful businesses. The, what is seriously worrisome in the southeast is gradually being checked, and uh, results is very positive as to the attacks and killings on security agents, assets belonging to the federal government, particularly that of the military, the police, INEC, and so forth. Our ability to checkmate this lawlessness has improved, and we are getting closer to something positive. Uh, these are my briefs to council. Like I said, we also uh, acknowledge the fact that there are things that have been done by the federal government with a view to improve police operations, ranging from the establishment of the police trust fund, the signing into law of the 2020 Police Act, and several other intervention funds that necessitated our technology and the intelligence-led policing uh, will be a reality. And uh, I briefed council also on the issue of adding our strengths in terms of recruitment, which we are uh, going to conclude very soon, that of 2020, and we also do 2021 within the year by the grace of God. This will assist us. I also brief the council on the establishment of the community policing, which has taken off in all the states, and uh, how these community policing officers are assisting in providing security in their various communities, because the operations of the community policing officers are restricted to their immediate community. and. Uh, We've been able to train about 31,000, and uh, they have actually been deployed to all the states, local governments, and communities that where they came from. Uh, we've spoken, I've also briefed council on the issue of the number of arrests we've been able to make, uh, the number of recoveries in terms of firearms and other serious weaponry that are used lawlessly. I've also been able to brief council on 
recovery, uh, uh, rescue of victims, of kidnapped victims. And what we are doing to secure the school children that are being kidnapped and how to go about securing those that are still going to the school. Uh, for the purpose of, I think, uh, press briefing, that is where I will uh, put the, that is where I will stop so that I don't give too much details on the nature of operation we will we'll, we'll, we'll do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. To differentiate between political, political talks and IPO. I don't even need to differentiate them. The issue is I'm looking for anybody who is committing offense or anybody who belongs to a proscribed organization. So the issue is it all depends upon the level of criminality or lawlessness someone does that the law will take it up on him. If it is a political talk that commits crime, he is in for it as a principal offender. And if anybody is sponsoring him, either aiding him or abating him or conspiring with him, he will, they will be taken together. The issue is IPOP is a proscribed organization and we expect nobody to belong to IPO. Sogri is an offense anybody who commits will be dealt with according to the law. So they are all offenders. It's just like uh, asking me to differentiate arm robber and the talk. So they are all the same. Any, it's the level of crime that matters and who violates or who does commit is the matter. So there is no way uh, you can say this is IPOB. No, it is not IPOB. It is talk that want to camouflage as IPOB. It all depends upon the type of crime the person wants to commit. You said Southwest leaders said they have been invaded by foreign headers. Well, it's, an, it's a statement which will not be taken lightly. We are looking into it. Uh, based on whatever intelligence available to us, we will deal with the situation. And uh, those who are also making the statement are also at liberty. And uh, uh, by national calling, it is also good for them to substantiate what they are saying to the nearest law enforcement, either the police or the SS, so that we can dig into, uh, see how this statement will be taken. But it is not only the it is not only today that we've been hearing issue of uh, foreigners coming into crime one offense or the other. And in some instances there are real evidences that some people arrested for various offenses that are not really Nigerians. So it's not an issue, it's not a new thing and uh, whatever level of uh, uh, security we need to provide, we are doing it in terms of providing, we have the border patrol police, we have, we try to mine our borders, we try to, the, cost, uh, the immigrations are also doing their job in checking in illegal aliens and so forth. But where there are issues of beating these checks and uh, somebody coming in to commit crime, we, if we take him, we will treat him according to the law. It's possible, but it's not as large as invasion. That word is very strong, and I think uh, we will look into it if actually it is true. And uh, on the other hand, if they also have anything that will help us in buttressing this fact, we are at liber they are at liberty to come to us or report to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.